You come back in half an hour. You will come back in half an hour. Let's prepare for ourselves to enjoy his kata. Let's go to read the Bhagavatam. Today, we will read chapter 8. Thanks, Kanto, chapter 8. Lord Krishna shows the universal form within his mouth. Introduction. The summary of the eighth, cap eighth chapter is as follows. This chapter describes the ceremony of giving a name to Krishna. It also describes his crowing, his playing with the cows, as his eating earth, and again showing the universal forms to his mother. One day, Vasudeva sent to Gargamuni. Gargamuni means the family priest of the Yadu, Yadu Bansha, Yadu Bansha, Yadu family's, his Yadu family's private Brahmana, Jyotisha. And thus, Gargamuni went to the house of Nanda Maharaja, who received him, Nanda Maharaja received him very well, and requested him to give names to Krishna and Balarama. Gargamuni, of course, reminded Nanda Maharaja that Kamsa was looking for the son of Devaki and said that if he farm, uh, sorry, if he performed the ceremony very gorgeously, the ceremony would come to the notice of Kamsa. He would then suspect that Krishna was the son of Devaki. Nanda Maharaja therefore requested Gargamuni to perform this ceremony without anyone's knowledge. Kidding me. And the Gargamuni did so because Balarama the son of Lohini increases the transcendental bliss of others. His, his name is Rama. Means Balarama's Rama is increase the transcendental bliss of others. And because of his extraordinary strength, Rama, Bala Rama, he is called, but he is called Bala Deva. He attracts the Yadus to follow his instructions. And therefore, his name is Sankarshana. Krishna, the son of Yashoda, Previously appeared in many other colors, such as white, red, and yellow. And he had now assumed the color of black because he was sometimes the son of Vasudeva. His name is Vasudeva. According to his various activities and qualities, Krishna has many other names. 
after thus informing Nanda Maharaja and completing the name giving ceremony, Gargamuni advised Nanda Maharaja to protect his son very carefully and then departed. Shikadeva Goswami next described how the two children crawled, walked on their small legs, so cute. The two children crawled, hi hi っていうことですね、crawled. The children crawled, walked on their small legs, played with the cows and calves, stole butter, and other milk products, and broke the butter pot. In this way, he described many naughty activities of Krishna and Balarama. Everyone knows why Krishna and Balarama is so naughty like a human. Then, our living entity, divas are so attracted by their leaders. That's why they are even the supreme god heads, but naughty, very sweet. In this way, he described many naughty activities of Krishna and Balarama. The most wonderful of these occurred when Krishna's playmates complained to Mother Yashoda that Krishna was eating earth. Mother Yashoda wanted to open Krishna's mouth to see the evidence so that my Yashoda could chastise him. Sometimes she assumed the position of chasti chasti chastising, sorry. Sometimes the, my Yashoda assumed the position of a chastising mother. And at the next moment, she was overwhelmed with maternal love. After describing all this to Maharaja Pariksit, Shukadeva Goswami, at the Maharaja Pariksit's request, praised the fortune of Mother Yashoda and Nanda. Nanda and Yashoda were formerly Dorona and Dara. And by the order of Brahma, they came to this earth and has a supreme personality of Godhead as their son. This is the introduction of chapter eight. Is there any comments or something? Okay. Let's go verse. Text one. Shurin Shuka Ubacha. Garga Prohito Rajan. Yadu Nan. Sumaha Tapan. Rajan Jagama Nandasha. Basudeva Prato Ditaha. Shukadeva Goswami said, Oh, Maharaja Pariksit, the priest of Yadu Dynasty, namely Gargamuni, who was highly elevated in authority and the penance, was then Inspired by Vasudeva 
to go to see Nanda Maharaja at his home. Text. Maybe it's better I read only English. My <laughs> Sanskrit is not so. <laughs> I tried maybe Shachi Baba is best. Sorry, English. But text. When Nanda Maharaj saw Gargamuni present at his home, Nanda was so pleased that he stood up to receive Gargamuni with holded hands. Also seeing Gargamuni with his eyes, Nanda Maharaja could appreciate that Gargamuni was a dokshaya. That is, means he was not an ordinary person seen by material senses. Text three. When Gargamuni had been properly received as a guest and was very comfortably seated. Nanda Maharaja submitted with gentle and submissive words. Yes, sir, because you are a devotee. You are following everything. Yet, my duty is to serve you. Kindly order me. What can I do for you? Maybe uh, this point, Shachinanda no Baba know well, but what I remember and that uh, I heard from Jayananda Maharaj and uh, other senior devotees, here it's written, when Gargamuni had been properly received, what does mean this properly received? Sundara Baba, please help. <laughs> Some remember? Properly means you know well done us. Rade, Rade. Thank you. Uh, I can speak like a parrot because it's not my uh, <laughs> my words, but I can repeat what what I listen from from devotee like you. Uh, the here is underlined uh, uh, how we have to upset uh, this high elevated person. Or, in other words, all Vaishnava is uh, is worth to be uh, upset in our life with great respect, uh, giving obeisance and uh, and with the gentle words we have to give a, a comfortable seat comfortable place and try to serve uh, uh, with some food or water of some juice, some fruit, and uh, create a quiet atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Very, mm, and also as possible, uh, confidential atmosphere. And like uh, uh, here, Nanda Baba, Nanda Maharaj, with folded hand, Try to ask, how can I serve you? What can I do for you? 
And uh, here is very clear explain, no? How uh, how is the behavior from the inferior to the superior? So, and this is what we have to do with uh, our dear Guru Dev, our prominent disciple of Guru Dev, and with all the devotees, all Vaisnavi, Vaisnava, and all the people we met, also ordinary people. Because this humbleness is our copyright, is our mark in our Sampradaya. But rather, rather, I say something. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's very helpful. Yeah, we need to we listen and remember it again and again because, uh, uh, like me, Westerners forget this kind of uh, show respect and etiquette. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It's very important. Uh, and, uh, verse four. Uh, Still, uh, this is Nanda Maharaj's word. Oh my Lord, oh great devotee, persons like you move from one place to another, not for their own interests, but for the sake of poor hearted Grihastas, householders. Otherwise, they have no interest in going from one place to another purport. As factually stated by Nanda Maharaja, Gargamuni, being a devotee, had no needs. Similarly, when Krishna comes, he has no needs, for he is Purna Atmarana. He satisfied already himself. Nonetheless, he descends to this material world to protect the devotees and vanquish miscreants. This is the mission of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And devotees also have the same mission. Wow. Devotee has the same mission. One who executes this mission of para upakara. Para upakara means performing welfare activities for people in general. Is recognized by Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as being very, very dear to him. Similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has advised this para upakara, performing welfare activities for people in general. Mahaprabhu also advised. And he has especially advised the habitants of India like this. One who has taken his birth as a human being 
in the land of India. Bharata Varsha should make his life successful and work for the benefit of all other people. Chaitanya Charitamrita Adiriya 9.41 On the whole, the duty of a pure Vaishnava devotee is to act for the welfare of others. It's very important, I think. The duty of a pure Vaishnava devotee, like Gurudev, is to act for the welfare for, uh, sorry, welfare of others. It's not written by Shirava. It's not written some Sanyashi. No. Welfare of others means for everyone. This is the beauty of a pure by Shirava devotees. Nanda Maharaja could understand that Gargamuni had come for this purpose and that his own duty now was to act according to Gargamuni's advice. Thus he said, please tell me what is my duty? This is important. Please tell me what is my duty? This should be attitude of everyone, especially the householder. ここ結構大事なところです。それリトルジャパニーズ。お客様が来た時にどうか教えてください。私の義務は何ですかと尋ねることが仕事をしている人、世帯者というのは仕事をしている、もしくはその仕事をしている人と同居をしている人という意味です
Therefore, Nanda Maharaja specifically used the word Mahad Vicharanan. Gargamuni had no interest to serve by going to Nanda Maharaja. But Nanda Maharaja, as a Grihasta, was always perfectly ready to receive instructions from a Mahatma to gain the real benefit in life. Thus, he was ready to execute Gargamuni's order. Bus five. Oh, great saintly person, you have complied the astrological knowledge by which one can understand the past and present unseen things. Once again, bus five. Mm -hmm. Oh, great saintly person, you have complied the astrological knowledge by which one can understand past and present unseen things by the strength of this knowledge. Any human being can understand what he has done in his past life and how it affects his present life. This is known to you. So Gargamuni is astrologer. Then Prabhupada's purpose is like this. The word destiny is now defined. Wow, what is destiny? An intelligent person who do not understand the meaning of life are just like animals. Animals do not know the past, present, and future of life. Nor are they able to understand it. But a human being can understand this if he is sober. Therefore, as started in Bhagavad Gita 2.13, a sober person, clever person is not bewildered. The simple truth is that Although life is eternal, in this material world, one changes from one body to another. Foolish people, especially in this age, do not understand this simple truth. Krishna says, at the embodiment of soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age. The soul similarly passes into another body at death. The self-realized soul is not Bewildered by such a change. Bhagavad Gita 2.13 
Krishna, the greatest authority says that the body will change. Body will change. And as soon as the body changes, one's whole program of work changes also. Today, I am a human being or a great personality, but with a little deviation from nature's law, I shall have to accept a different type of body. Today, I am a human being. But tomorrow, I may become a dog. And then, whatever activities I have performed in this life will be a failure. This simple truth is now rarely understood. But, one, who is a dealer, clever person, can understand this. Those in this material world for material enjoyment should know that. Because the present position will cease to exist. They must be careful in how they act. We must be careful in how we act. This is also started, stated by Lusyabha Deva. Lusyabha Deva. Shimano Bhagavatam 554. Also, this body is temporary. As long as we have to live in this body, we must suffer. Whether one has a short life, whether one has a short life or long life, one must suffer. The threefold miseries of material life. Therefore, any gentleman, dealer, must be interested in Jyotisha astrology. Nanda Maharaja was trying to take advantage of the opportunity afforded by Gargamuni's presence. For Gargamuni was a great authority in this knowledge of astrology. By astrology, one can see the unseen events of past, present, and future. It is a duty of a father to understand the astrological position of his children and do what is needed for their happiness. Now, taking advantage of the opportunity afforded by the presence of Gargamuni. Nanda Maharaja suggested that Gargamuni prepare a horoscope for Nanda's two sons, Krishna and Balareva. Verse 6. My Lord, you are the best of Brahmanas, especially 
because you are fully aware of the Jyotish Shastra, the astrological science. Therefore, you are naturally the spiritual master of every human being. This being so, since you have kindly come to my host home, kindly execute the reformer, the reformatory, execute the reformatory activities for my two sons. Purpose. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 413, the four Varuna means Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. This four Varuna must be present in society. The Brahmanas are required for the guidance of the whole society. If there is no such institution as Varuna Ashrama Dharma, and if human society has no such guide, as a Brahmana, human society will be held. In Kali Yuga, especially at the present moment, there is no such thing as a real Brahmana. And therefore, Society is in a chaotic condition, totally crazy, confusion. We don't have real Brahmana now, here Prabhupada says. That's why society is chaos. Formerly, there were qualified Brahmanas. But at present, although there are certainly persons who think themselves Brahmanas, they actually have no ability to guide society. Wow. <laughs> the Krishna consciousness movement is therefore very much eager to we introduce Varunashrama system into human society so that who are bewildered or less intelligent will be able to take guidance from qualified Brahmanas. Means yeah, Prabhupada said this Krishna consciousness movement is very much eager to reintroduce the Varunashrama system into human society means this Krishna consciousness movement can finish chaos in society. This is a very important mission and responsibility. Brahmana means Vaishnava. Wow. What is Brahmana? Prabhupada says Brahmana means Vaishnava. After one becomes a Brahmana, the next stage of development in human society is one next step there. It's to become a Vaishnava. People in general must be guided 
to the destination or goal of life. And therefore, they must understand Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The whole system of Vedic knowledge is based on this principle, this vision. But people have lost the clue and they are simply pursuing sense gratification with the risk of grinding down to a lower grade of life. It doesn't matter whether one is born in a Brahmana or not. This is for hope for our Westerners. It doesn't matter whether one is born a Brahmana or not. No one is born a Brahmana. Everyone is born a Shudra. But, by the guidance of a Brahmana and by Sanskara. This, this two is key, Brahmana and Sanskara. One can become Dubija. Twice born means second birth. A Brahmana to Sanskara niyotte daini no tanjo o subete no hito ga mukaeru koto ga dekiru. And then, gradually become a Brahmana. Brahmanism is not a system meant to create monopoly for a particular class of men. Everyone should be educated. Everyone should be educated to so as to become a Brahmana. At least, there must be an opportunity to allow everyone to attain the destination of life. Regardless of whether one is born in a Brahmana family, a Kshatriya family, or a Shudra family, Anyway, one may be guided by a proper Brahmana and be promoted to the highest platform of being a Vaishnava. Thus, the Krishna consciousness movement affords an opportunity to develop the rightly de destiny of human society. Nanda Maharaja took advantage of the opportunity of Gargamuni's presence by requesting him to perform the necessary reformatory activities for his sons to guide Krishna and Balarama towards the destination of life. Text 7. Gargamuni said, My dear Nanda Maharaja, I am the priestly guide of the Yadu dynasty. This is known everywhere. Therefore, if I perform purificatory process for your sons. Kamsa will consider them the son of Devaki. Prapada's purport. Gargamuni indirectly disclosed that Krishna was the son of Devaki, not of Yashoda. 
since Kamsa was already searching for Krishna. If the purificatory process were undertaken by Gargamuni, Kamsa might be informed and that would create a catastrophe. It may be argued that although Gargamuni was a priest of the Yadu dynasty, Nanda Maharaja also belongs to that dynasty. Nanda Maharaja, however, was not acting as a Kshatriya. Therefore, Gargamuni said, if I act as your priest, this will confirm that Krishna is son of Devaki. It means Gargamuni and, yeah, it's already Gargamuni knew Krishna is the son of Devaki and already comes a certain Krishna. It's confirmed by Gargamuni's word. Verse 8 and 9. Still, Gargamuni's word. Kamsa is both a great diplomat and a very sinful, sinful man, bad person. Therefore, having heard from Yoga Maya that your daughter of Devaki, that the child who will kill him has already been born somewhere else. Having heard that the eighth pregnancy of Devaki could not bring forth a female child, and having understood your friendship with Vasudeva, Kamsa, upon hearing that, Purificatory process has been performed by me. The priest of the Yadu dynasty may certainly consider all these points and suspect that Krishna is the son of Devaki and Vasudeva. Then, he might take steps to kill Krishna. Means Kamsa might take steps to kill Krishna. That would be a catastrophe. Prabhupada's purpose. Kamsa knew very well that Yoga Maya was after all, the maid servant of Krishna and Vishnu, and that also Yoga Maya had appeared as the daughter of Devaki. Wow, it's interesting. Kamsa knew very well that. After all, Yoga Maya was the maid servant of Krishna and Vishnu. Yoga Maya is maid servant of Krishna and Vishnu. And that also Yoga Maya had appeared as the daughter of Devaki. She might have been forbidden to disclose this fact. Actually, this was what happened, what had happened. Gargamuni argued very soberly. 
that he's taking part in performing the reformatory process for Krishna would give rise so many doubts so that Tamsa might take very severe steps to kill the child. Tamsa had already sent many demons to attempt to kill this child. But none of them means none of these demons had survived. Everyone killed. All the demons are killed. If Gargamuni were to perform the purificatory process, Kamsa's suspicious would be fully confirmed and he would take very severe steps. Gargamuni gave this warning to Nanda Maharaj. It's like a warning from Gargamuni to Nanda Maharaj. It's more severe situation will come. Verse 10. Nanda Maharaja said, My dear great sage, if you think that you are performing this process of purification will make Kamsa suspicious, then secretly chant the Vedic hymns and perform the purifying process of second verse here in the cow shed of my house. Without the knowledge of anyone else, even my relatives, all these processes of purification is essential. Here, Nanda Maharaj said, Gargamuni, please do it healingly. Because this process of purification is essential. Prabhupada's purport. Nanda Maharaja did not like the idea of avoiding the purificatory process. He wanted to do it. Despite the many obstacles, he wanted to take advantage of Gargamuni's presence and do what was needed. The purificatory process is essential, especially for Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas. Therefore, since Nanda Maharaja presented himself as a Vaishya, this process of purification was essential. Formerly, such institutional activities were compulsory. Bhagavad Gita for certain. Without these activities of purification, the society would be considered a society of animals. Wow, it's heavy. Without these activities of purification, the society would be considered a society of animals. To take advantage of Gargamuni's presence, Nanda Maharaja wanted to perform the Nama Karana ceremonies even secretly, without any gorgeous arrangements. Therefore, the opportunity for purification 
should be regarded as the essential duty of human society. In Kaliuga, however, people have forgotten the essence. Mm. In Kaliuga, however, people have forgotten the essence. Shrimad Bhagavatam 1110. In this age, people are all bad and unfortunate. And people do not accept Vedic instructions to make their life successful. Nanda Maharaja, therefore, did not want to neglect anything. To keep intact a happy society, it's important. Happy society means Nanda Maharaja do it for society, not for his own profit. To keep intact a happy society advanced in spiritual knowledge, he took full advantage of Gargamuni's presence to do what was necessary. How Degraded society has become within 5,000 years. The human life is obtained after many, many millions of births. And it is intended for purification. Previously, a father was eager to give all kinds of help to elevate his children. But at present, because of being misguided, people are prepared even to kill, to avoid the responsibility of raising children. I think now it's maybe time, so maybe we can stop here to read. So is there anyone, some um, comment, sharing, how do you feel? <laughs> Question, please ask Shachinandana Baba, please. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> but very beautiful commentary from Prabhupada. And we can learn many beautiful things for us and for our society, for our Radha Mohan. Okay. Okay, Jai Jai Sri Radhe.